How are you folks? <coughs> Excuse me, got another kit for you today. It's a X1 Mash Beaster, which is um, the first jet to break the sound barrier. Um, the pilot was Chuck Yeager, the famous pilot Chuck Yeager. Um, it's probably back edition, it's 148 scale by Edward. Uh, kit number 8079. There's the four options. Um, two orange ones, a white one and orange and white one. Um, Edward base um, and also the lake dry bed base is uh, where two, two of the aircraft are taken from. Uh, there's some more of the kit options. This side, QR code is for online instructions if you're missing them. Uh, I just want to do a quick build and let's take a look what we get inside. Instruction manual. You get two sprues, some resin wheels, your decals, fellow etch, three type of instrument panels. Laser cut printed um, mask, so there's nothing to say about that, just laser cut. You get another small decal, which has just got um, serial number with X1 on it, so I'm quite sure what that's for. Uh, your photo etch. Three type of instrument panels, you have to check that out in the instruction booklet. Uh, seat belts, and that's diamond piece shape with the three holes is to do the exhaust system um, and I believe the uh, jets fuel was a mixture of um, alcohol and uh, oxygen and stuff so technically it's a bit like a, just a uh, just like a rocket technically so <coughs> uh, flight time was roughly about two hours um, the aircraft didn't have enough fuel in it and it wasn't capable of taking off the ground. So the only way that they could do it is strap it to the bottom of a uh, B-29 Super Fortress. Uh, going to about 32,000 feet, dropping it, letting it go and then it can take off from there. Uh, your decals, you've got your US stars, instrument panels if you wish to do it that way. Um, uh, some small fine stencils, serial numbers for the aircraft, US Air Force. It's um, like I said, it was the first aircraft to break this the uh, sound barrier. I believe it reached Mach 1.2. <coughs> which is pretty fast. It's very fast. Uh, you got your resin wheels. Nice bit of tread on them. Main fusel uh, wings, sorry. The wheels, but you obviously you won't be needing them because you'll be using resin. It's like landing gear, exhaust nozzle, but you won't be needing it because that's the resin. Uh, cockpit parts, tub. Um, I thought this was, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, wheel, wheel arch, but it's not, it's actually a part of the seat. Uh, instrument panel, you're going to have to sand this flat to put your photo etch on. Um, not sure what quite these are. There's more landing gear, pedals, flight stick. Um, your two fuselage halves um, and your wings landing gear very basic um, nothing on the inside it's very very basic very basic um, these uh, pits are to do with um, to do the airflow um, vortex pieces um, also because it's a limited run kit there's um, you can get this kit, it's not hard to find, but um, because it's a limited run, there's no um, P 
pin location so lining the two fuse drives up is going to be a little bit tricky you're going to have to take your time make sure it's all lined up um, the ejection pins here you're going to have to take care of these ones because they might affect the fit issue this one down here as well you're going to have to take smooth flat these ones you won't see so don't worry about them uh, you won't need nothing about that and I know you need to acquire a little bit of nose nose weight but I know it's an instruction it doesn't actually say so just try and put a large chunk in there if you're going to have the wheels down uh, information on the aircraft and it breaking a barrier and stuff 1945 onwards and 1947 so just after the war so it's still working on their jets and stuff so getting faster and faster and it basically uh Without this test, we wouldn't have the jets we have today. So if you wish to read that, pause the video. Uh, your first part, sprue map. What you get in the kit. Your paint callouts. What colours you'll be needing. Uh, working with your cockpit. Firewall, seat, seat belts, instrument panel. Two halves going together, like I said before. Take your time because there's no locating pins. Wings, your jet nozzle, mask off your canopy, um, your wheels. Come to think of it, I didn't even show you what the canopy looked like. Um, There's your canopy piece, very basic um, for the aircraft, there wasn't a lot to it. Um, there's one of your paint options, bright orange one, the dry lead bake air, air force base, uh, 1947. Orange one's okay. This one's pretty cool. Orange and white breaks it up. Half if it's one side's white and one side's orange, so a bit different. 1950s, Edward Base again. Um, this one, uh, Dry Leg Base 1946. This one here was the first plane to do the sound barrier, and then these ones followed onwards. So this was the very first one, which is orange. Well, you got 1947 from Edward Base, which is in the white. Um, I think the white one looks better than the orange, in my opinion. So I might even do consider doing the white one. Um, but then again, I might might even do the orange one because because it's the very first one that broke the sound bar. So um, I'm not quite sure what one to do. Um, I highly recommend anyone to get this kit, especially uh, if you're into your jets and stuff. So it's one to have in your stash and your collection for basically the first jet to break the sound barrier. So there you go, guys. That's a X1 Mash Beast, or I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, one for you, it's by Edward. Hey, Liz, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.